Get those tails a wagon. An all new AFV Animal Edition starts right now. Most days, it is great to be a lion. No natural predators. You can sleep all you want. Food is literally everywhere. Yes, most days are great. Except International Hug Day. Because even on International Hug Day, no one really wants to get hugged by a lion. It's okay. She still has her pride. Welcome to America's Funniest Home Videos, Animal Edition. And now, when he isn't hanging with the big dogs, he's playing with the puppies. Alfonso Ribeiro. Hello, everyone, and welcome to AFE Animal Edition, the show that celebrates the good times and humor provided to us by our friends in the animal kingdom. And we have it all. We're sort of like Noah's Ark. If Noah and his family had a bunch of video cameras and smartphones. <laughs> Pop goes the toaster. Hey, were you supposed to just play marker on the box? Yeah. Okay, but you colored Henry. Henry looks like a subway car. Hurley said she can only have one dog. So she hit one of them. Slade. Hi, baby. Left paw. Right paw. Phase. Good girl. I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh. Yeah, no. Everyone knew that Timothy did not like to be bothered while watching his favorite programs. Oh, Timothy. I'm flattered. It isn't the knife that's making him nervous. It's this guy. Maybe he's nervous the bug's going for the knife. All the thrill of hanging your head out the car window without ever having to leave the house. Life is good. What's the magic word? Say please. Come on, Sully. Sully, do you want to go outside? Say please. Say please. Manners are everything. Okay, come on, let's go outside. Josh loved his dog, and he loved his daughter. And he was raising them both the exact same way. <laughs> That's good parenting right there. Oh, oh my god. I'm not gonna lie. I have the greatest job in the world. It's like a dream come true. But I have other dreams as well. Someday I'd like to open a little bed and breakfast in a small coastal town. I'd call it Alfonso's Hideaway. It'll be quaint and cozy, a place to get away from it all and relax. Oh yeah, and it will only be available to mice. <laughs> Tired of being a member of the rat race and the daily toll it takes just being a rodent in this day and age? Well, why not leave your overcrowded, infested digs for a well-earned vacation at Alfonso's Hideaway. That's right, a cozy, comfortable paradise with no traps, no cats, and no exterminators. Stay in one of our homey cottages and sleep the restful slumber that comes from being able to let your guard down. You'll gorge to your heart's content at the Alfonso Hideaway's all-you-can-eat buffet. So, make your reservation now before we fill up for the summer. You may never want to leave. Alfonso's Hideaway, where it's good to be the mouse in the house. The best advice in life is to be yourself. Embrace it. Don't try and be something you aren't just to fit in. It isn't always easy. Even animals sometimes go through an identity crisis. Yeah, he thinks he's a kangaroo. Go get it, go get it. Yes, I literally have a cat 
that plays fetch. Sophie overheard them talking about getting a dog, so she stepped up her game. So go get it and jump up here on the couch and give it to me. And then I'll take it and then she'll go get it again. And she'll do this over and over and over. Sophie feels it's a small price to pay to keep a dog out of the house. She like the best freaking cutest cat ever or what? Sure, a lot of dogs love the water, but Izzy was really starting to believe she was a dolphin. Holy cow. The squirrels make it look so easy, so he decided to give it a try himself. He is channeling his inner squirrel, and he's pretty good. A little more practice, and he might even attempt scampering. You know, if the fence can handle it. Just because it's called a cat tower does not mean dogs can't enjoy it as well. It's a perfect fit. Sort of. She's home. She's home. She's home. She's home. Yay! Who says dogs are the only ones that get excited when you get home from school? Now let her know how happy you are. Good dog. Now, we all like to think our pets are some of the smartest animals on the planet. And they are, mostly. But some pets deserve extra recognition and find themselves on the AFE Animal Edition Honor Roll. For the record, the cat who accidentally locked himself in the closet did not make the honor roll. It's the cat that let him out that made the honor roll. Remember, the smart ones need to take care of the others. That is impressive. Good job. This guy's a good whistler. Yeah, you do. And make it honor roll worthy. Come on, you can do it. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> of course, not every pet makes it on the honor roll. <laughs> but it gives them something to strive for. You might hear the rustling of leaves, a chirp or a growl, maybe even a park ranger screaming, dude, drop the picnic basket and run. All things that let you know you are about to have a close encounter of the animal kind. If you ever find yourself in this situation, remember you're supposed to say, huh, 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 huh. <laughs> well played, well played indeed. Here he comes. After that encounter, I bet Karen isn't complaining about her view being limited by the size of the space between the bars now. It was all she talked about when they first got in the water. That's why they call them wetsuits. Nothing can keep Dylan from his morning coffee. So my kitchen is growling at me this morning. Well, almost nothing. As you can see, I've got a beautiful male line looking through my kitchen window and I just need to get to that kettle to make some coffee that's all oh my the decision is should I go cold turkey this morning have no coffee what do you guys think skip the coffee skip the coffee what a dilemma I don't know if this uh, chicken mesh is much of a protection. Let's not find out. We just need coffee, put. OK, if that encounter didn't get your heart pumping, I am not sure what the coffee is going to do for you. I love animals, and I love sports. So you know I totally love it when a sports team chooses an animal to be their name and mascot. And the more unique, the better, which is why there is a new minor league baseball team in Madison, Alabama that is on my list of favorites. Their mascot is a raccoon. <laughs> 
But do you know the super cool name of the team? Are they the A, Redstone Radical Monkeys, B, Rocket City Trash Pandas, C, Bama Dumpster Bandits, or D, Yellowhammer Treasure Cats? Well, I will tell you the answer when AFE Animal Edition returns. Baseball in Madison, Alabama, just outside of Huntsville, definitely has a face to put with the team. The fans and players of the Rocket City Trash Pandas, the AA affiliate of the Los Angeles Angels, love to rally around their incredibly savvy raccoon mascot. And his name is Sprocket. And Sprocket is awesome. We all know raccoons are notorious for getting into trash cans, but Sprocket prefers hanging out at the ballpark instead of the dump. Sprocket is often seen wearing his trademark trash can rocket ship. He made it himself in a nod to the stadium being a mere six miles from the U.S. Space and Rocket Center and, get ready for this, Space Camp. It's why they call Huntsville Rocket City. So the next time you find yourself in the great state of Alabama, you might want to take a little trip up to Madison and say hello to Sprocket. He's always ready to induct another baseball fan into the ever-growing trash panda nation. Go Sprocket and go Trash Pandas. All right, keep track of all your favorite videos tonight because at the end of the show, we are going to award $1,000 to the video we enjoyed the most. So see if our favorite video is the same as yours. All right, <laughs> want to see the greatest card trick of all time? I just need total quiet. <laughs> total quiet. <laughs> Seriously, this is remarkable. David Blaine said to me, how did you do that? Now, think of a card in any suit, and I am going to... <laughs> I guess I'll have to do it later because it looks like it's time for another episode of What's That Dog Barking At Now? Oh, the robots are coming. And Reggie, for one, is not at all happy about it. There is something so rewarding about watching a large group all doing the same thing at the same time. It's why everyone loves doing the wave. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> so in that spirit, we'll be counting down our top 10 pretty awesome stampedes. Let's kick it off with the bottom five. Number 10. Grandpa always under-promised and over-delivered, and today was no different. He told the grandkids they would see at least one or two dolphins. Yeah, this is over-delivering on a major level. Number nine. The baby elephant stampede is sort of off the charts on the cuteness scale. Only thing cuter would be if one of them was struggling to catch up. Oh, there he is. Aww. Number eight. <laughs> I totally get the expression, flew the coop now. Number seven. It has been over 80 years since they were replaced on the nickel, and they still aren't happy about it. Number six. Baby Goat Stampede! Wait for Diego. Now quick, Baby Goat Stampede the other way. Man, I could do this all day long. Oh, what the heck. One more time. Goat Stampede! We will continue our countdown a little later in the show. We all know that in life there are things you do and things you don't do. The key is knowing what goes in which category. So, to help you out, it's time for an AFE Animal Edition Don't. Don't touch a horse without permission. Just don't. And don't wear that swimsuit and hat combo ever. That's a double don't.
A wise man once said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. What, Ferris Bueller was a wise man? Well, he was a wise teenager, but he's a wise man now. That movie did come out a long time ago, but life does move pretty fast. In fact, in the animal world, if you blink, you just might miss it. When spearfishing, it is important to not appear like you are a fish yourself. Can't blame the shark. Those flippers do look tasty. Will the shark go for the other flipper or the bare foot? Probably best not to stick around and find out. A true sand artist can really make the image come alive. Isn't that amazing? So lifelike, so real. That trash can has a monster in it. She knew that much. And kicking it didn't seem to reveal anything. So let's see if Dad can rouse the trash can monster. Well, he almost made it. Has anyone seen my chicken nugget? I thought I left it on the stove. The problem with a series of blind turns is you never know what's around each and every corner. You know, had he actually hit the moose, I bet the moose wouldn't even feel it. And now it's time for the Animal News Network. Journalism that is independent, honest, and housebroken. I'm Alfonso Ribeiro, and here now, the Animal News. It is deer season in Pennsylvania, and drivers are urged to use caution when driving around the state. And if you find yourself driving near Chalmers Place, you should also be on the lookout for the city's new implemented deer crossing guard program. Yes, helpful volunteers have accepted the call to make sure neighborhood deer get to where they're going. It answers the age-old question, why did the deer cross the road? Because they knew they could do it safely, thanks to the deer crossing guards. Police are warning drivers and pedestrians alike that the dreaded Rancho Turkeys gang are back at it. For years, citizens of the Rancho have had to put up with the constant harassment of the street gang known as the Rancho Turkeys. And yes, they are actual turkeys. The Milo Rancho Turkeys. Rancho Turkeys members brazenly stop driving cars and try and intimidate the passengers to pay a toll of corn, seed, or anything they might have in the car that a turkey might like to eat. Apparently, the Rancho Turkeys take to the street shortly after Thanksgiving in an act of revenge. You'll get your revenge on the fourth Thursday of November. We have an AFV, A-E-A-N-N, APB. That is an America's Funniest Home Videos, Animal Edition, Animal News Network, Animal Points Bulletin. Wow, acronyms really do save time. Authorities are seeking any information in the apprehension of this guy. As can be clearly seen in this surveillance footage, an unidentified, impudent squirrel shamelessly entered the Tantivy Mart, headed to the nuts and candy section, and after taking his sweet time making a selection, took a bag of candy and exited the Mart without paying. Anyone with any information should contact the local police. Do not approach the assailant. He is a little squirrely, has sharp teeth, and considered hungry. After an unparalleled career in the armed services, Rear Admiral Chauncey Horatio Quackenfurter has retired. Known as the toughest Rear Admiral in history and the only goose to ever serve, he couldn't help but inspect the troops one final time. Even on his last day, Quackenfurter towed the line. He ran a tight ship, said Petty Officer Boots McCaffrey. You stepped out of line and he let you know it, that's for sure. Later in the day, Quackenfurter was awarded the Congressional Medal of Pate, the highest decoration ever given a goose. And now it's time for an Animal News Network fake fact. If you feed a Madagascan spider nothing but sugar cubes, they will spin webs made entirely of cotton candy. Not true! I'm Alfonso Ribeiro wishing you the happiest of Animal News. And now, quite possibly the cutest thing you will see today. 
The best day of Petey the Penguin's life was when they opened the Butterfly Sanctuary right next to the penguin exhibit. It guaranteed a good time would be had by all. Well, at the very least, a good time would be had by Petey. <laughs> See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. But in that particular exchange, would you be able to tell which one is the alligator and which one is the crocodile? Well, you definitely will after this. Alligators and crocodiles have been kicking around the planet in one form or another for approximately the last 70 million years. They are as close as we get to having living dinosaurs. But how can you tell them apart? We all know that one says, see you later, and the other says, after a while. But there's more to it than that. For starters, alligators' mouths are broad and shaped like a U, as in, you better stay away. While crocodile snouts form a V shape, as in, you very much better stay away. Alligators tend to have darker scales, black or gray, while crocodiles are usually olive or tan. But ask any small fish, and they'll tell you they all look the same on the inside. Let's talk teeth. Crocodiles have mouths full of sharp teeth that are visible at all times. But alligators have an overbite, so you won't see all their teeth until it's too late. Oh. You can find crocodiles all over the world, most notably in Africa, Asia, Australia, and the Americas. Alligators, on the other hand, are mostly native to the southeastern United States, parts of South America, and China. And there's only one place to find crocodiles and alligators together in the wild. South Florida. Wow. The Sunshine State really is a cultural melting pot. Lastly, you can tell a crocodile by its beautiful singing voice. Okay, not really. I sort of made that one up. But now the next time someone says, see you later, alligator, or after a while, crocodile, you will 100% be able to know who is who. And now you know. Check it out. My neighbor's Dalmatian is turning three and having a birthday party next weekend. Seems like only yesterday Spotty was a puppy. I love going to animal birthday parties. They're so easy to shop for. You just swing by the deli and say, surprise me. some animals just perfectly blend into their environment. Nature has given them the perfect camouflage. Take a look at this. Can you spot the animal? It's right there as plain as day. Look carefully. And I'll show it to you when AFV Animal Edition returns. Do you see the animal blending into its environment? Okay, how about now? There it is, pretty as a picture and right in front of your eyes. So 
Young people get inspiration from historical figures, athletes, titans of industry, and even entertainers. But for me, the best inspiration comes from our friends in the animal world. Get ready to be inspired. Patience and perseverance will pay off. Keep your eye on your goal and stay calm. You'll get there. Of course, it won't always be easy, but you'll learn from every misstep. <laughs> Can someone get Marco the Wonder Dog a towel? While most of the colony does the heavy lifting, there's always some mid-level executive telling the ones actually working how to do their job better. The journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, or a single scooch in this case. And the faster you go, the faster you'll get there. Ever wonder if in countries that use the metric system, they are called 2.54 centimeter worms instead of inchworms? I mean, it makes sense, right? Sure, he could just leap up onto the counter, but wouldn't it be easier if he just, you know, climbed Margie? To the victor goes the spoils. Hey, cool. Our countdown of the top 10 pretty awesome stampedes continues. We'll pick it up with number five. And they thought it would be faster if they timed the trip so they would be going against traffic. Number four. Yes, they usually fly south for the winter, but a lot of ducks like to work on their cardio so they'd rather walk. Helps them work off all that soggy bread we feed them at the park. Number three. I'm pretty sure getting caught in a daily golden retriever stampede is probably what heaven is like. At least I hope so. That's why I always try to be really good. I don't want to miss out on this. Number two. When it comes to an elephant stampede, it is always better to be next to it as opposed to being in front of it no matter how slow they may be going. There certainly are a lot of them. Let's uh, speed this up a bit. There we go. And wait for the telltale sound that it's over. There it is. We will reveal our number one pretty awesome stampede a little later in the show. One of my favorite things to do sometimes is to eat dessert first. Seriously, why save it for last? Between you and me, delayed gratification is not all it's cracked up to be. So go ahead, treat yourself. <laughs> Take it. She said it was okay. <laughs> totally worth it. I'll just be enjoying this upstairs while I heal. Say cheese. <laughs> It'd be humiliating if it weren't so tasty. Give me pop. When there is more than one dog in the house, you have to be quick. Give me pop. Seriously, you snooze, you lose. Give me pop. <laughs> broccoli? He doesn't want any stinking broccoli. It's like they can hear the crinkle of a potato chip bag being opened from miles away. It's like their siren song calling to them. So they don't mind helping themselves to a treat. <laughs> and he's out of there. When your dog doesn't like someone, trust your dog. Just say it. Now it's time to see what we have for you from our AFE Animal Edition Archive. It isn't just the dogs of billionaires that get to experience the weightlessness of zero gravity by launching into space. Nope, Ranger gets to experience it in this teeny tiny plane. I am so glad they have the windows closed. It isn't easy being the only dog in a house full of cats, especially at snack time. They tend to gang up on her. So it's wise to choose your moment, grab your yummy, 
and then back away slowly. <laughs> Never turn your back on a room full of cats. If only there was a way to quiet them down. Quiet! Impressive. One of my favorite animals has got to be the platypus. They are just so unique. They have a bill like a duck, but they aren't a bird. They are mammals, but they still lay eggs. They don't have a stomach. Seriously, they don't. Their esophagus connect directly to their intestine. Female platypuses don't have nipples, but they still nurse their young. And just when you thought it couldn't get any weirder, male platypuses have something else. Is it A, a row of serrated teeth, B, a small venomous spur on each ankle, C, a forked tongue, or D, a disarming smile? Think you know? Well, I'll tell you when AFV Animal Edition returns. Fun fact, male platypuses have a venomous spur on the inside of each ankle connected to a venom gland located in their thigh. The venom is strong enough to kill small animals and cause humans some serious pain. Just one more unique attribute that makes the platypus one of the most intriguing animals on the planet. All right, let's take a look and see what we have in the old AFE Animal Edition inbox. I hope that Nigerian prince that wants to give me $20 million writes back. I gave him all the personal information he requested. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, here's our first email. Hey, Alfonso, are there any animals that have a reputation for being timid and demure, but deep down they are a force to be reckoned with? Ashley, Watertown, South Dakota. You know it, Ashley. Take the deer, for instance. They have the reputation for being skittish, shy, and reserved. But when they need to, they are more than capable of stepping up. Some even have a sense for adventure, like famed stunt deer, Bucky McButtercup. <laughs> That's Bucky right there. And he is known as the most adventurous daredevil deer in all of Michigan. It thrills the tourists when Bucky bolts to the top of the falls. And then, falls. Oh my God. Bucky does like to put on a show, but is Bucky okay? Did he succumb to the terminal velocity of the Taquaminon Falls? Will he ever resurface? Bucky, Bucky, are you okay? And he is okay. Seriously, if Bucky didn't make it, would I really be showing this to you? Come on, you know me better than that. Our next one starts, Dear Alfonso, my wife and I are going away for the weekend and she wants to hire a cow sitter to babysit the cows. I say, that's ridiculous. What say you, Lenny Purcell, Oklahoma? Oh, Lenny, listen to your wife. The cows may seem capable of behaving while you're gone, but you know the expression, when the cat's away, the mice will play? Well, the same goes for cows. Cows are notorious party givers. Before you and your wife are even out of earshot, they will invite their friends over, take over the yard, and stuff is bound to get broken. Cows really cut loose when no one's looking. Let's do one more. Valerie from Akron, Ohio writes, Dear Alfonso, I am trying to throw less items away and repurpose them instead. Any ideas? That's great, Valerie. We can all do our part. You can use an old tire to make a fun backyard swing. You can use old marbles to plug knot holes in a fence. And if you have one of those play kitchens, you could always do this. Gracie used to love cooking toy chicken in her toy kitchen. So let's see what you do in here, Gracie. Taking care of the chicken. Oh yeah? Let's see. She went from baking to caretaking. What did you do? Did you make them a nest? She used to let them nest in a bed of garlic mashed potatoes, but this is so much better. Wow, so they all have a, their own little boxes, huh? And now she utilizes every compartment. Oh. <laughs> you had them hiding in there. <laughs> hmm, got any in the microwave? And I do mean every compartment. <laughs> That is pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Let's see the other side. So think twice before having that old play kitchen hauled off to the dump. You can always turn it into a deluxe chicken apartment building. <laughs> 
<laughs> you cracked me up. <laughs> you cracked me up too, Gracie. Keep those emails headed our way, and I will answer as many as I can. And to that Nigerian prince, where's my money, bro? <laughs> the five animals of Chinese martial arts are the tiger, crane, dragon, leopard, and snake. And of course, I have trained in the puppy style of kung fu, where I make my adorable puppy face and lull my opponent into submission by sheer cuteness. <laughs> Sure, Ronnie was a yellow belt, but Kitty was self-trained. <laughs> the Mantis really only had one move, but you had to admit, it was as impressive as it was confusing. He'd only been taking karate for three weeks, but the whole family was impressed with his dedication. Well, everyone except the horse. The horse didn't kick. Paw block. Paw block. Paw block. Paw block. And treat. Something my judo instructor gave. This is a uh, fitness strap. All right, it's a big, gigantic rubber band. And Max wants to be in the judo video. Max. That's cool. Let's try it again. Take two. Okay, let's go. This is going to be the greatest judo training video ever. And there's Max again. That's not it. Max. Yeah, you're gonna need to try this some other time. Here at AFV Animal Edition, we are just one big happy family. And just like your family, our pets are an important part of it. And since you are kind enough to share videos of your pets with us, we wanted to do the same with our AFV Animal Edition staff members' pet of the day. Meet our producer, Chloe, and her rescue tortoise, Morris. Hi, everybody. I'm Chloe, and that's Morris. Morris's favorite things to do are eat crunchy lettuce, take long naps out in the sunshine, and give me grumpy looks. Say hi to Alfonso, Morris. Oh, Morris, where are you going? You gotta say hi to Alfonso. Do you have a favorite clip yet? Don't forget, at the end of the show, we will choose one video to receive $1,000. Maybe we'll pick the same one. We will also share our viral clip of the week and conclude our top 10 list. All this and oh so much more when AFV Animal Edition continues. <laughs> Clear your mind. AFB Animal Edition is back. Did you know that every second, 74.2 million videos are sent by text or by email? Of course you didn't, because I just made that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's just say a lot of videos are sent every second. A lot. And of all the videos, the really special and unique ones become our viral clip of the week. At the University of Miami Appalachian State football game, the most intense action was happening not on the field, but in the stands. All eyes were on the kitty in danger. And the crowd went wild. By the way, Miami beat Appalachian State 25-23. And the cat was fine. If I can get serious for just a moment, I have been asked if I wouldn't mind taking this time to explain you know, the, the birds and the bees, so, so here goes. You see, when a, when a mommy and a daddy love each other very much... Whoa, 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 whoa. Not those birds and bees. Actual birds and bees. It's an animal show. Oh, 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 birds and bees. Of course, of course, animal show. Yeah, no, 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 I, I get it, I get it. Birds and bees, a actual ones. <laughs> Check these out. A bee couldn't possibly open that soda. Two bees, on the other hand. <laughs> Do you have a kiss from mommy? Some bird kisses are nice and gentle. <laughs> Others, not so much. <laughs> now, Buzzy would be the first one to admit he had put on a little weight over the winter. But he figured with all that flying and pollinating, the ounces would just melt away. Poor Buzzy. 
This is gonna take longer than he thought. This duck just came up to me. And I don't know what he's trying to tell me, but... <laughs> he's trying to tell me something. Do you think it might be the khakis? Like, maybe he thinks you'd look better in, I don't know, uh, denim? Even corduroy. Okay. Perhaps a dress slack. Hey, buddy, I need those pants. But do you? All right, I'm getting out of here. He really thinks you need a new look. <laughs> the bees have moved in, but that lawn needs a mowing. It is the Suburbanite's conundrum. Oh, yeah, that mower engine isn't going to disturb them at all. <laughs> well, at least he will have a nicely mowed lawn to look at as he applies a bunch of calamine lotion. Do you want more? That bag looks twice as big as him and twice as heavy, too. Oh, wow. That's what you get when you don't take the dessert plates in at the barbecue. But some people really enjoy the company of bees. Like the bee woman, for instance. It's the bee woman. And you thought the cat lady was crazy. Turn around. Maybe they're bees. Honey, there's a bee at the door. I'm gonna let Jay get it. Thanks, Jay. We have been counting down our top 10 pretty awesome stampedes. But before we reveal number one, let's take another look at the first nine. Number 10, the Dynamic Dolphin Dash. Number nine, the Baby Elephant Walk. Number eight, the Panicky Poultry. <laughs> number seven, the Bombastic Bison. Number six, Baby Goat Gallop. Number five, the Wooly Bully. Number four, the webbed-footed walkers. Number three, the retriever revolution. Number two, the pachyderm peregrination. And now on our countdown of top ten pretty awesome stampedes, we proudly present number one. Isn't it always the way? You announce your city is hosting a three-day banana festival, and instead of a stream of flush, upper-class tourists, word gets around and every monkey for miles around comes stampeding into town. The tourists are never going to come now. That is number one. What a wonderful menagerie of videos we have seen. I told you it was going to be like Noah's Ark on video. Did you pick your favorite? It was a hard choice, but the one we enjoyed the most and the recipient of the $1,000 is Buzzy B's recent weight gain, submitted by Tiffany Skidmore of Elko, Nevada. Thanks, Tiffany. And maybe you can use some of the money to get Buzzy a salad. This has been an amazing ride. We saw some incredible animals, some tender moments, some animal bonding, had lots of laughs. And if I'm not mistaken, I'd go so far as to say we learned a little something as well. We learned that even when you know it's coming, toast can still startle you. <laughs> we learned that shark cages are a good thing. We learned that soda is always a treat. Broccoli is never a treat. And who doesn't love cheese? We learned that baseball fans love Sprocket the Trash Panda. Dogs are scared robots will replace them, too. And next time, this cat shouldn't get seats up so high. But most of all, we learned that life is too short not to spend it celebrating the people and animals in our life and laughing while we do it. Let's do this again real soon. Good night, everybody.